All right, Jeremy Feldman with the Memphis Astronomical Society. Welcome again to another episode of Telescope Tips here with Brian Hancock, our resident expert on a lot of different pieces of equipment, but specifically binoculars, which is what we talked about last time. And again, we talked about getting started with handheld binoculars. Well, today we're going to talk about getting set up with a little bit larger set of binoculars that you actually put on a tripod and some of the advantages and disadvantages of that. But if you're looking at, you know, settling in for a long observing session, again, instead of going the telescope route, you might want to get started with a good set of binoculars. And Brian has certainly logged a lot of observing hours with binoculars. So right. Brian, talk about what we got here today. Okay, so we have a 25 by 100 millimeter binocular. Now, what that means is, you know, some telescopes, some refractors, they're only 72 millimeters or 100 millimeters. Well, look at this, you're getting 100 millimeters for each eye. And so if you want some really nice, contrasty views of deep sky objects, this is what you want. Don't underestimate the 25 uh, times the magnification. That doesn't sound like a lot. But I can tell you, actually, uh, my first telescope, I had an 8-inch telescope. And honestly, I was a little disappointed that the views, they seemed a little dim to me. And it was a lot better than what I had previously. But I thought, well, you know, it's okay. When I started looking through 25 by 100 millimeter binoculars, it just knocked my socks off. I thought, wow, this is what I've been waiting for. The views are bright, you have a large field of view, and the best thing is you're using two eyes. So the only warning I have to give you is once you start using two eyes, you will find it very uncomfortable going back to Cyclops viewing. Right. Um, because doing this all night is no fun. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to talk in a future episode about vinyl viewers for telescopes, but right. yeah, two eyes, obviously better than one. Right. So for using this, um, this binocular, of course, you have um, a little bit of work to do as opposed to just using a handheld binocular. You've got to have a really good sturdy mount. With, without a sturdy mount, there's no way on earth that you're going to handhold 25 by 100 binocular and uh, see anything worthwhile. You've got to be able to find your way. You've got to have a good mount. You've got to be able to find your way. So as opposed to a handheld binoc, you know, you just have to point and shoot. With this, you're going to need some kind of finder to be able to find your targets. And, uh, and finally, besides the mount and besides the finder, you're also going to need, uh, I'm sorry, besides the tripod, size the finder, you're going to need some kind of mount so that you can easily move the binocular in whatever direction you want. So I forgot one more thing. You're going to need a chair. I promise you. Your, your back will thank you um, because if you don't have a chair, you're going to see the car up right yep. Yeah, if you're looking at things on the horizon like we saw the full moon earlier tonight, it was, it was a lot easier. But if you're looking up, you know, it's a lot, it's pretty hard to get down and actually right. look through the scope. Through the, the eyepieces. Right. So uh, the first thing, let's look at the tripod. This tripod has a, adjustable legs and the most important thing that this tripod has is it has a geared center column. Now the reason that's important is because you've got tall people like Jeremy and you've got short people and you've got everything in between. So the geared column head allows you just the crank to either go up or down and uh, and you will find that that's also important uh, when you're looking at the zenith uh, of course you want to raise the column and uh, when you're looking at the horizon you you want to lower the column so that's the first thing to look for in a tripod if we look at the head this is a 410 Bogan Manfrotto head. This head allows you to move the binocular. Go up and down, obviously. In any direction that you need. Now, if you wanted to swing, let's say, from an object here to one that's maybe 45 degrees away, you have to 
swing right. a lot quicker. So uh, you've actually got two options. Uh, one is on the Manfrotto, you can turn this knob to the left oh, there you go. and make wide adjustments. And uh, once you get to where you're going, you can make a fine adjustment by just turning this knob. Another thing you can do, because you'll find that it's a lot easier to observe between the tripod legs than trying to uh, observe facing the tripod leg. So another really easy thing you can do is pick up the whole assembly and move it. And, just turn it. and the main purpose for that would be to keep yourself in between the tripod legs. Now for the finder, If you have a uh, center post binocular like this, you will need two things. You will need this bracket so that you can put it on the center post. And then you will need this, um, this uh, um, red dot finder that you can put on the bracket. That goes right there. You can use that, calibrate it or uh, tweak it so that it's, it's aligned with the, uh, with the lenses and you can use it to find moon, planets, even lose it to, to find globular clusters. So having a red dot finder is essential. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's uh, show you how this is used with a chair and uh, how you can almost look at the zenith. Um, it's, it's a little bit difficult to maintain that position, but, uh, but you can uh, get pretty close. Okay, so we have a little problem here. You know, I want to look at something maybe, you know, uh, close to the zenith. Well, you know, I'm here and my binocular is over here, so how do I do that? So first, um, a simple bar stool will help you get under the tripod. Um, and uh, that's gonna be invaluable for you. So if you can get under the tripod, you can get in a better position to point toward the zenith. So now, you know, this is, uh, I want to, Oh, that's gonna take me a long time. So like I said, for the Bogan 410, you wanna grab the binocular, move this to the left, and then I can make a big adjustment there. Now I need to have the eye pieces line up with my eyes. Push that to the left. And, oh, that's a little too low. So with the fine adjustment of the Bogan 410, that is perfect. Now you can see I'm not quite at uh, not quite at zenith. So let's see how high we can go with this until I knock my teeth out with this crank here. There we go. You can relax your hands, and you can see I'm well under the tripod, and not too bad. You look straight up. How's your neck? Oh, it's okay right now. Ask me five minutes later. Yeah. But you don't have to crouch down and, right. and squint your back. Now let's try this without the seat. Let's see here. Hopefully my stomach's not poking out. Huh? <laughs> Let me breathe in and do this. I tell you, it's painful just watching it. Yeah. You can do that for maybe a couple of seconds, but if you maybe, want to look at an object for a period of time. Maybe like a yoga position. Yeah. Not gonna happen. Yoga and astronomy. <laughs> you gotta be in yeah. shape to do this. <laughs> not, so. not as comfortable as with the chair. Yeah, definitely. So you wanna have, again, with observing, it's not it's not just a matter of having the right equipment, but comfort and conditions exactly. are also important, right? right. You could be out a while. Right. We talked about this before. If you're looking at certain objects, especially deep sky objects, you don't want to just look at it necessarily for a second or two. Sometimes right. you want to look at it for a period of time and really absorb it. Exactly. Dote exactly. on an object. Right. And uh, you know, we've said before that comfort is linear, discomfort is logarithmic. <laughs> so you you know, if you're a little bit cold, you know, you put on a shirt, you feel a little bit better. But if you uh, if you start getting cold and you start getting uncomfortable, I mean, it just, it, it doesn't just add up. It's just, 
It's just exponential. It's an exponential. Right? Yeah. yeah. It can ruin your whole night in it right. pretty quickly. Yeah. So again, you have a good tripod. Make sure you set it up right too and, and test everything before you start fooling with the binox because uh, if you don't if your legs are not secured and they're not fastened and you haven't, you know, secured you know, put everything in place to securely uh, place the binoculars, that can right. be a problem too. Yeah, yeah. You uh, don't want to oops. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah, not with a pair of now the pop, and these yeah. weigh about what 10 pounds, 10 yeah. 15 pounds. Right. So, yeah, you have them mounted right, tripod set up right, a good um, laser finder, a red dot finder actually, and then of course a good chair, and you're good to go. So, get this equipment set up, and you can be out for several hours looking at stuff. So, anyway, again, thanks, Brian. Sure, another episode of Telescope Tips with the Memphis Astronomical Society. I want to remind you that we, we meet once a month. First Friday of every month at Christian Brothers University at Sessie Hall, room 155. Meeting starts at 8 o'clock. You can meet myself, Brian, other amateur astronomers. We also conduct two dark sky observing sessions every month if the weather's clear. And again, Brian's there, I'm there, other astronomers are there with telescopes and binoculars. So it's a great opportunity for you to learn about astronomy and the type of equipment that we use and also explore the universe with other like-minded individuals. Our website is memphisastro.org. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode of Telescope Tips. Clear skies.